I get a bunch of emails every single week throughout the summer asking me, Sean, where do you get your fence? Uh, what does it cost? How much fence do you put around each tree? What's the appropriate way to fence in a tree? Today, I want to try and talk through some of those things and, and how to do it right, what works best for us. And more importantly, I'm going to show you a bunch of examples of when I've done it wrong. If you have questions about putting up fence, this is the video for you. The first thing we want to look at is how big of a circle do you put around the tree? This is a pretty good example, right? You see how there's no way, no how, the, 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 the tree itself is going to touch the fence. You do not want that, right? If your tree, if your evergreen tree can touch your fence, it's going to stop growing, right? So this is going to be different for every single size of tree and every kind of tree. You've got to do what's best for you. I try, I try to leave maybe a foot to 18 inches around the whole circumference of the tree. Now, another thing to look at is I try to put, I'm gonna try not to fall down in the mud here. I try to put a couple of T-posts in to hold the fence in place. Now, this is a borderline example. That's not as good. On this side, the fence is securely attached to this pole. On that side, the fence, maybe I just didn't do as good a job or it somehow became undone, but you can see now where the tree is touching the fence. This has to get fixed. I can't leave this like this all, all winter, all summer long. You can see this, this fence here isn't attached to this post at all. So if we move this back around, now there's plenty of room around the tree. So what I need to come here is just tie some number nine wire on here to make the, so the fence can't move. But like that should have been done last winter. Another example, when the, like this tree has basically outgrown this fence. So to, to keep this fenced in, I need to take this down and put in a new fence. But if you see here, I don't know if we can come in here. This tree has been fenced in since the day I put it in. And we can see the branches are not touching the, 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 the tree. And it's growing everywhere except the part that was touching. That's what we're trying to prevent. I actually have other examples where I've done this really poorly here. But again, I want to show you what not to do so you can do it right at your house. So that's all fine and dandy, but what does it cost to do all this, Sean? I mean, I have a lot of trees here, but that's fine. I've been working on this for years. These are two, these, these are typically T-posts. You can get these at Tyson's, you can get these at Tractor Supply, you can get these at Farm and Fleet or Fleet and Farm, depending where you live. These are five and a half foot, six foot T-posts. These cost about five and a half dollars a piece so if they cost five and a half dollars you're like well that's eleven dollars in post per tree the fence um i find that everyone sells fence like this but tractor supply in my area by far is the best deal it's a 48 inch high woven wire fence i can get a 50 foot spool of this or i've always been able to get a 50 foot spool of this for right around 45 to 50 dollars what I try to do is cut that into three, three sections, which, what does that come to, 16, 17-ish feet, and that should be able to, like, for 50-some dollars, I should be able to have enough physical fence to do three trees. All right, so let me give you an example of, like, what if you got a little tree, right? What if you didn't buy or, or uh, grow, like, a large evergreen, but you're like, you just got some seedlings? I got some seedlings last fall from the Iowa DNR. This is, I can't remember if this is just a red oak or a pin oak. I don't need two T-posts. What I did here with one post, I put it on the west side because I know the wind is always going to blow this way. This obviously is going to hold up over time. And there's no way this stick in the current state is going to be touching any of this fence. Right? So I believe this probably would be okay to leave all summer long if I wanted to. Um, but for sure, for sure, for sure, a tree this size if, if in Iowa, if you don't put a fence around it by next fall, that is as good as dead. Now, here's another example that has worked out pretty well. This deer, uh, this deer, this tree itself has gotten a little bit bigger. And I was like, 
last summer I took the took the two T-posts out, I took the large fence down, <clears throat> and last fall I put in this tile. Now, I'll take this off. I wouldn't dare leave this on all winter long, but did this protect the tree during the rut? Absolutely, most of it, right? There's no way a deer doesn't want to rub its antlers on that. I did, as I can come here, I don't know if you can see this, but I do have a broken branch. This is obviously from a deer, um, but I'll come in and cut that off and like, that's just kind of the cost of doing business. So here's an example where I put the tile in to protect the, the trunk, but I didn't think about this part of the branch. That branch is completely wrecked. So will this part die? I don't know, it ain't good, it's not good. But that was, uh, that was me being a little bit lazy last fall. And now here's an example of completely mailing it in. It was probably the end of the day after a long weekend and I was getting tired. I don't know exactly what this tile is protecting, but it wasn't enough. You can see this branch is, base, is, is completely destroyed. Over here got destroyed. Uh, this whole branch over here is destroyed. So I think the right answer is trim all these branches off and then come up with tile a lot higher. All right, we got a couple more examples. Yes, this fence was put in to protect this, this Colorado blue spruce from the deer and the rut. It's successfully done that. Uh, I put the post on the wrong side. It should have been on this side. Should have been the other, I mean, I, I do a lot of things wrong. I, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing necessarily. If I leave this fence on here like this, all summer long, it's gonna kill this tree. So, I mean, I got a lot of trees here and I have done more right than wrong, but you're not gonna learn anything about me showing you what I do right. Let me show you what I do wrong so you can not make those same mistakes at your house. What I wanna do now is like, let's go take, let's give you an update on the critter that's been growing or living underneath our front porch. The tripod was sitting here the other day. I kicked all the rock in and filled in that hole we sat, left the game camera on that for three or four days. The animal didn't dig that back out. But over here, there was another hole and I kicked all the rock in down there last night. And as of this morning, it was dug back out. So I went ahead and moved, moved our camera. I don't know, uh, somebody on the comment told me maybe it was a woodchuck. I had a family member suggest maybe we've just got giant rats. Yeah, I hope neither of those, but something's digging that rock out. So, you know, maybe they dug it out last night and they just now moved to Cleveland and they no longer live here. But if that's not the case, hopefully I record whatever it is and then we'll investigate our next steps then. So did I teach you anything about putting fence around tree? Man, I hope so. Um, if, if you got questions, let me know in the comments down below. If I need to make a follow-up video, I certainly will. I always try to reply to everybody's comments. But, uh, yeah, man, I hope this you found this helpful. And otherwise, I'll catch you next time.